hello guys welcome back to my channel today i'm going to show you guys how to stop excessive barking and rough housing Start with him because he's the one barking right now. This pre the technique right here, this pressure. Shh. No. And off. Shh. You can do two things. One, we want to create restrictions. So if I grab the leash and I restrict him like this and I do the touch and off. It, that whole body language right there is okay, I get it. You know, you want me to shh. And off. I'm gonna keep going back. And off. Now they need to be one second. Yeah. So what would they, what we need to do is like they they uh, they responded every time I came up to them, but they have to understand why am I doing that? Because they know it's a correction. Immediately you can see the body language like, oh I messed up. But they don't really know exactly why why I'm doing that, like what did they do, do wrong the first time that I do it. The first two times, they can tell they repeat the behavior. But once they realize that every time they're barking, that's when I'm running up to them and doing that, they start to realize, oh, it's because of the barking. When I bark, it sets me off where I go and do the correction. Now, I will explain what I did. Slow motion, I'll grab the leash and restrict. This tension right here alone, you can tell the dog's body language. It, he feels like he's being corrected. You know, because dogs are really responsive to pressure. So his whole body language right now is like, okay, I don't want to do anything wrong. I'm sorry that I did something wrong. That's, that's what that body language means. So I, I, see, I'm holding tight, but I should have already released. When you see when I release, you almost see that relief from him. Because it's like, he realizes, okay, now we're good. Right there, he got comfortable again. Now if he goes and barks, and I come back and I restrict him again with the pressure, he will realize that I'm doing, the, again, he knows what the pressure means. It means he's doing something wrong and he needs to stop. Now, because I do it every time he's barking, he realizes it's because of the barking. And I'm also using the enough, no and enough when I'm doing that <coughs> right here. He did it again because he got it closer to you. I just come back here, restrict, enough, release. So he's realizing that when he's doing that particular behavior, he's getting corrected for it. Now, correction just means it's something that, you know, gets him to stop, tells him that he's doing something that he's not supposed to be doing. And as you can, as you can tell, it's not harsh. It's not something that you have to be, like, actually doing firm, like, aggressive correction. It's just something that works to stop them. We have done correction and even harsh, but probably... Yeah. Well, uh, the, a lot of times, again, it's not even amount of, it's not the amount of physical pressure that you apply. There's a lot to do with your... Your po posture, your energy, body language, uh, releasing at the right time. So to do it, so you understand how I do. I'm gonna do it again. He's not doing anything wrong, but watch his body language when I approach him like this. Do you see that? It's like, what did I do wrong? All from the little correction that I already did. Now this already establishes a lot between my relationship with me and him. You saw that before he didn't he didn't care because I wasn't doing anything. And I told you before I started, I wanted to pay attention because look, now they're completely quiet. And I'm gonna start to bring in new things that, you know, may trigger the barking again. Which they're not even barking, but I would add in more and more things to make sure that they are understanding that they cannot be barking once I tell them to stop. So if someone knocks at the door and they bark, great. The moment I'm, I'm from the other room and I say enough, they stop. Because they realize now, see when I approach them, look at the difference. I mean, literally you saw that before they were completely ignoring me, they were barking, pulling. Now they're quiet and laying down. Now because I'm going to come in and I'm going to follow up with patting him. It's okay. Good boy. Um, you know, patting both of them. It's okay. Good girl. So she's more submissive. You can tell her whole body language. is like This whole thing here, people be like, oh, she's scared of you. She's respectful. I mean, they, this is how she naturally would respond to another dog. It's no different. You can watch ma many videos of dogs that are allowed to be themselves in a pack or wolves. This would be her, her body language exactly if a wolf that is more dominant approached her like this. She's like, okay, I don't want to do anything wrong. 
I'm submissive. That's what she's telling me. Now, I'll go here and reorder her because dogs, you know, they also learn to adapt to the way that we live. So because I'm here reordering her, and I'm going to do this multiple times throughout the training today, she's going to realize she doesn't have to be afraid of me. She doesn't have to be that submissive because I'm not asking her to do that. Like another more dominant dog or wolf, they may be constantly showing dominance. That's part of the, the pack mentality because they want to keep the submissive dogs, you know, submissive. So they constantly um, assert dominance. We don't need to do that. We just do that just to establish the behaviors that we don't want. But right now, when she's being good, it's like she's submissive because she naturally is. But I'm going to keep trying to encourage her to be less submissive. So we do a lot of just praising and, you know, being her friend. Good girl. Come here. Come here. That's a good girl. Come on. Come on. Yeah. No, she's all excited, but she's, again, more, you know, timid and submissive. Same thing with him. Good boy. So he's probably going to be a little easier. Good. It's, it's you. She yeah, she's a little more insecure in general, you know. So see, but this is great. Now watch how the, it's escalating again. Now watch that. And off. Go. Go. Do you see it changes with the and off? Now that's why you're using the right techniques. It's really important because it's not, you don't have to do it forever. A lot of times people will think like, oh, I have to, every time the dog makes something, I have to be poking them. It's not really like that. It's that the technique works just to let the dog know, hey, you're doing something wrong. And once you establish that, your presence, your commands, your body language, and your verbal command has way more power than it did before. And you don't have to keep repeating the correction all the time. You know, the dog just learn. Um, so now I'm gonna open the door to see if there's any new thing that comes up. Good girl, good boy, come on. Good job, guys. Good job. Yes, come here, come here, good. Good, so same thing, okay, see, nope. The jumping, corrected. Now it's completely okay, see how she doesn't understand yet, like correction, why the correction is happening, and then this, of course, has a lot to do with her personality as well. She's a little more on the reserved side. But then she got corrected, she goes away. That's completely fine. I don't have to be. That doesn't traumatize the dog. What's going to happen is I'll bring them back. Come on. Good job. Come on. Let's go. Good. Come. Good girl. So she'll realize that it, it, I'm only correcting for specific behaviors. Before was the barking. This time was for the jumping. And you saw the correction. It's in the video. You'll be able to see it. It's very gentle. I just did a little pushback. And she understood, okay, that you don't want me to do that. Uh, now she has to realize that I'm only going to do those corrections for, again, specific behaviors, the ones that we don't want. So, so far, there's only been two things, the barking and then the little jumping. When they get too excited, they jump in my face, correction, because they're going to teach them to hold themselves back a little bit more. Come here. Come on. Good girl. Come. Yes, yeah, a good girl. That's a good girl. Good boy. Good girl. Okay. It's okay. Good girl. Another problem the owners complained about that they were having with these two siblings, they're only eight months old, by the way, is that they play really hard, rough housing, and they end up getting into fights because they don't know how to stop. So I went over with the owners on how to address this issue, which is mostly caused for lack of exercise. The dogs also have a leash pr pulling problem, which made it very difficult for the owners to be able to take them out to give them the proper exercise that they need. Keeping in mind that these dogs are German Shepherd Husky mixes, and those breeds require a lot of physical and mental exercise. During this private lesson, I worked with the owners and the dogs so that they are able to get more exercise and the owners are able to walk them on a leash and that will make it so much easier to correct this issue at home. Besides all that, I explained to the owners that the first technique that I used to stop the excessive barking also works really Enough. effectively to stop roughhousing. And as you guys are going to see, I'm now able to just now use that verbal command to, to stop them without having to do the physical correction. If they do, I can just tell them again. And the third time it comes with me going there and doing the little touch correction just to reinforce it. But I like to show that the touch is so effective that you don't have to keep poking them all the time. It's, it's so easy. You establish it the first day, and then boom, it's done. It's Maybe here and there, you know, we have to go back and do a little reinforcing. Otherwise, it's done. In other words, the technique that I showed in the beginning of the video 
by restricting the dog with the leash, having the approach that I showed you guys, and then the touch correction to really reinforce what we're teaching them becomes so powerful and meaningful that you're really quickly able to switch to just using the verbal command to actually stop the dog. I said the command becomes really powerful and this is a one training session. It's a one-time thing and you see the dogs responding amazingly because we established right from the beginning that now we are going to reinforce no and enough instead of just saying those those words and letting them have no meaning we make them meaningful and powerful by reinforcing them with the pressure and correction techniques that i showed you guys now we have been working on obedience this is a two hour private lesson by the way so we worked on a lot of things after i taught the owners how to stop the barking and the rough housing we started working on leash manners and downstay and they told me the dogs didn't like to hold a downstay that's why they didn't use that you in the process of training them so i showed them how to teach the dogs to stay down to hold it down and I, as you can see we have all the distractions we have been throwing in front of them from a bag in the middle of the floor that they are not familiar with all the toys that they like we got treats we got food there's all kinds of distractions and we have been reinforcing them to stay down which i'm going to show you guys in another video i just wanted to focus on the barking and rough housing so i don't want to work on you know how to do the down but i want to show you guys that we did do that as part of the training because this is going to really help the dogs hold themselves back and have more self-control which will help with the rough housing because now we're covering every part of the training that would be necessary to really have calm dogs in the house which comes from more physical exercise mental exercise and then um, actually effectively correcting the particular behavior. The dogs did really amazingly with everything. They picked up very quickly. They did not hold it down before. They couldn't walk on a leash before. As you can see here, this is the first time of them walking nicely next to each other. The owner is practicing for the first time. There's a lot of new things happening. You always got to keep that in mind. These dogs just learned today to stop the barking and hold themselves back. Stop the rough housing. Hold it down. Walk on the leash. As you see, um, they're walking pretty nicely. The owner is practicing. There's a lot of things for the owners and the dogs to learn all in one session but i leave them with a lot of homework and knowledge for them to continue to practice so every day after i leave the dogs will just continue to improve and they'll become more comfortable with all the new things they have just learned i hope you guys enjoyed this video please don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video